I will never forget the moment that I not just saw the data, but understood what it was. Once it owns your phone, it owns everything. It can access the camera, the microphone. Your videos, your photographs. It can see what you're writing. The GPS location. Your emails. It can do everything that the user can do and more. Nel luglio 2021, un consorzio internazionale di oltre 80 giornalisti di 17 testate svelò uno scandalo sugli spyware che continua a riecheggiare in tutto il mondo. Al centro dello scandalo, la divulgazione di una lista di 50.000 numeri di telefono. Insinuandosi in ogni meandro della società civile, l'indagine rivelava che la lista includeva attivisti, giornalisti, avvocati e leader politici, presi di mira illegalmente da alcuni governi, potenziali clienti dell'azienda di cybersorveglianza NSO Group. Questa storia racconta l'attività cruciale del Security Lab di Amnesty International, che ha fornito le prove forensi secondo cui i dati erano certamente riferibili ad attacchi informatici di un sistema di spyware di livello militare, chiamato Pegasus. on is investigating uh, target attacks and target surveillance against uh, human rights defenders, civil society and journalists around the world. Il Security Lab inizia a indagare sulla NSO Group nel 2018, dopo la scoperta che Pegasus era stato usato per sorvegliare un membro dello staff di Amnesty International. Now, if they can target one of the biggest human rights organizations in the world without accountability, just think what they think they can do to other human rights defenders. And to me, I, you know, that infuriated me. Di conseguenza, il Security Lab si ritrova in mano le chiavi utili a conoscere meglio la NSO Group e i suoi clienti. They managed to identify approximately 600 domain names that NSO Group's customers were using to deliver these kinds of attacks. We also found a handful of other activists who had also received similar links at the same time. On one of these uh, individuals' devices, we found traces of a new kind of attack. It used to be that for Pegasus to get infected on your phone, you would need to click on a link, you know, something related to your work. Here, you're really going to enjoy this. It was very manipulative. Uh, and then we saw an escalation to what's called the zero click. Zero click significava che Pegasus era capace di auto-installarsi sul telefono senza alcuna interazione dell'utente, rendendo così lo spyware ancora più pericoloso e difficile da individuare. You know, there's like some smart technologists on the other side working for NSO who spend a lot of time and effort trying to create these spyware tools, try to operate them in a way that isn't detectable. And so it's definitely an interesting um, mental battle to try and understand what they're doing, understand what kind of mistakes they might have made. Tra il 2018 e il 2020, il numero delle vittime di Pegasus identificato da Amnesty International, dal Citizen Lab dell'Università di Toronto e da altre associazioni partner continuava a crescere. Even if you haven't been totally owned and there's no proof of infection, the fact that you've even been targeted can have a major psychological impact. They knew everything I said, uh, and you laughed, you was really in danger. They are threats. Of course you have fear. On te met devant les gens et on te déshabille. C'est une violence. C'est une violence. Nonostante le prove sempre maggiori e il danno arrecato ai difensori dei diritti umani, le reazioni alle attività di NSO rimanevano modeste. We had been talking about this issue alongside many other civil society partners for a really long time uh, and we had essentially driven home the point that this is an industry and this is a company that by way of transparency it provides very little information and so that adds to the atmosphere of impunity. Con la lista dei 50.000 numeri di telefono, però, le cose sarebbero cambiate. L'organizzazione Forbidden Stories, con i suoi giornalisti d'inchiesta, guidava un'indagine con l'aiuto di testate come Guardian, Le Monde e Washington Post. Amnesty International faceva da partner tecnico. We've put so much effort into building the expertise to be able to do this kind of research. And if it had not been for those sort of years of work and years of trying to understand how we can do human rights work a little bit differently in this sphere, we wouldn't have been as fit for purpose as we were. E quindi quali furono le reazioni al Security Lab quando arrivarono i dati? 
who were those phone numbers? Who did they belong to? What did this mean? I mean, the questions that just started rolling um, through my head were epic. But every time we got even like a little bit of an answer about what we were looking at, that feeling of like, this is important. This is really important. It just, it just grew and grew and grew. It really drove home the fact that this industry is out of control and that we need to rein it in because it has massive implications for human rights worldwide. Entrando nel vivo delle indagini sulla lista dei numeri telefonici, era fondamentale adottare misure di sicurezza. Not only are you working on a very sensitive human rights project, you're working on a sensitive human rights project that concerns one of the largest spyware vendors in the world. The more we realized what we were looking at, the more we realized that states wouldn't want this information to get out, that NSO groups certainly wouldn't want this information to get out. For all of our meetings, we were making sure we didn't have our regular mobile phones or our regular laptops in the same room. Then through the course of our investigation, we actually found out that a couple of the journalists that we were working with had in fact been targeted. Con il prosieguo delle indagini, i giornalisti si accollarono all'ingrato compito di verificare l'identità dei numeri telefonici. Quante di queste persone però erano state effettivamente attaccate da Pegasus? Grazie ad un lavoro di avanguardia, il Security Lab aveva gli strumenti per dare una risposta. We developed some forensic tools for extracting data from an iPhone and so over time we began to identify more and more of these um, unknown suspicious process names and we were able to tie these process names back to the Pegasus spyware itself. What that meant is they were actually able to build tools that we could then use to remotely access backups of phones and quickly, as quickly as possible, do an assessment um, of whether or not there were traces of Pegasus on that phone. Questo è un punto di svolta dell'inchiesta. Nel luglio 2021, dei 67 telefoni a cui il Security Lab era potuto accedere, 37 risultavano infiltrati da Pegasus. Oltre a 14 capi di Stato, l'indagine allargata rivelava che i numeri di almeno 180 giornalisti di 20 paesi diversi figuravano tra i dati. Il Pegasus Project elencava anche gli 11 paesi individuati come potenziali clienti di NSO Group. Inoltre, si scopriva che Pegasus era stato usato con i familiari del giornalista saudita Jamal Khashoggi prima che fosse ucciso dagli agenti dello Stato saudita. Gli strumenti forensi elaborati dal Security Lab da allora sono stati resi open source e installati oltre 70.000 volte. Così gli utenti di tutto il pianeta hanno potuto rimpinguare la lista degli attacchi comprovati gettando nuova luce sul fenomeno della cybersorveglianza illegale. Quindi, con le informazioni acquisite e la segretezza del caso, cosa è successo al momento di divulgare il Pegasus Project? Are people gonna see how important this is not just for you know civil society and human rights defenders around the world but for like all of us this is a major privacy issue this is something that big tech corporations need to look at that journalists need to look at that everybody needs to look at and is this going to be the moment we hope it is to be able to pivot towards actual change con ripercussioni che continuano a propagarsi in tutto il mondo le rivelazioni del Pegasus project sono risultate esplosive As a result of the investigation, a number of sort of steps have been taken in the right direction. The US government placed NSO Group on its entity list for malicious activity. Investigations are open in Hungary, uh, Belgium, France. The Supreme Court of India has set up a technical committee to look into Pegasus targeting. There's many more, but I I'll stop there. Ultimamente, grazie all'opera di Citizen Lab, Apple ha denunciato la NSO Group affinché risponda della sorveglianza e della persecuzione dei propri utenti. Davanti a tali rivelazioni, NSO ha ribadito la propria posizione, dichiarando di fornire ai governi autorizzati tecnologie utili a combattere il terrore e il crimine. I'm thrilled to see that the world did take notice, right? People do realize that this is important. I feel like this is now crunch time, and hence Amnesty has been calling for a moratorium on the sale, transfer, export and use of spyware until a proper human rights regulatory regime is put in place. 
I think people have like gotten over a little bit of this tech apathy that we see all the time. Like tech is, it's too big, it's too scary. We can't regulate it, like it's out of control. Not true, right? This stuff is built by humans and it can be regulated by humans. There is no difference. There's much more, much more to be done. Investigations need to be held into uh, providing victims with the right to remedy and perpetrators behind this should be held to account. So we need to keep exposing this work. We need to keep advocating for regulation and we need to keep reminding everybody that there is hope. You know, we can change this system. Your rights can be protected. Your phone does not need to be a weapon against your privacy.